Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Maeve, the Beginner Bug Lady, and this week I will be continuing on with getting started with my setup for jumping spiders and praying mantids. And I will also be setting up my large uh, Phytopus 3 just jumping spider enclosure, which will be a bioactive setup. So I have all my ingredients for my bioactive setup here, and I will be doing that in this video so I hope you enjoy please click subscribe if you like this video and also please feel free to leave any comments in the section below if you have any hints or tips for other beginners as well so hope you enjoy <laughs> to my bioactive setup I just wanted to talk about some of the equipment that I have ordered this week that has seemed to have actually all arrived today which has been brilliant for making my video uh, I'm a bit of a shopaholic so I always get very excited whenever things from the internet arrive into my house so last week in my video I mentioned that I was going to use my pro rep spider life substrate in with my sling enclosures However, I am a beginner, this is Beginner Bug Lady, and I've discovered that you don't actually have to use substrate in with your slings. Um, it can actually damage their lungs as they prefer a slightly drier habitat, so any uh, substrate that does dry out can actually affect their lungs. So I'm just going to keep my little sling enclosures um, empty whenever the slings arrive, just like that. They have some lovely cork bark and flowers in them anyway, so they'll look very nice and I don't want to damage my little spider's lungs. So I'm going to keep it substrate free uh, for the start and then I can put it into an enclosure which includes substrate whenever it goes through its first couple of molts. So the first thing that has arrived this week has been my new LED lamp. This will provide adequate lighting for my Phytopus Regis jumping spiders whenever they arrive. It's a little touch lamp, so it is very easy to switch on and off. <laughs> there we go. And it is also LED, so it doesn't give out a lot of heat, which is brilliant because it means I don't have to worry too much about uh, my enclosures heating up too much or drying out. Speaking of which, my hygrometers also arrived this week. I didn't spend all week practicing how to pronounce that. Maybe I did a little bit. Uh, these arrived this week. I got three of these for eight ninety nine. They're going to measure the temperature and the humidity of this room and also in my mantis and spider enclosures. They seem to be averaging out in this room at about 22 degrees. So I really want to keep this room between 21 and 28 degrees to keep it at an ideal temperature for both my spiders and my mantids so I don't have to provide too much extra heating like heat mats um, or things like that. So it's a nice warm room and hopefully it should be nice and comfortable for my spiders and my mantids. I have also purchased a couple of plants for my bioactive setup. These are from Earth and Air Displays Online so big thanks. They sent them out really well packaged and in really good condition. This little one here with the dreadlocks is called the Happy Beam Peperomia. He's the Bob Marley of plants. And this one is a Tradescantia Nanook. Please forgive my Latin pronunciation. Um, I have been practicing, but I'm not very good at it. Um, I love the pink variegated leaves in this. I think it'll go really well with my spider enclosure for my sub-adult to adult spiders, as they're all pink, as you can tell. I love a bit of pink. Hopefully it would all fit in nicely. These plants can also handle medium um, to dry conditions and not too much heat or too much direct sunlight. So they should be quite easy to keep for a beginner such as myself. But they're just very pretty. Love it. Here is all the mantis equipment that I have so far. So I purchased this mesh enclosure. I thought this might do well for my giant Asian mantis whenever it gets a little bit bigger. It's made of mesh, so it's easy to climb. Um, the only thing I will have to watch out for is humidity because it can lose humidity a little bit more quickly but I hopefully will just um, amend that by misting it a little bit more. Inside here I have also ordered a mantis den enclosure which is 15 by 15 
by 20 centimeters this larger enclosure is 30 by 30 by 30 centimeters um, I'm going to do a little time lapse video on building that because I'm sure you don't want to see me fluff around building that all day um, big thanks to Mantis Den for sending them out they're really pretty enclosures I can't wait to show you whenever it's all built look at the little cute print they sent out with a little sticker so cute so thanks very much Mantis Den so this morning my uh, adult to sub adult enclosure for my Philippus Regis jumping spider arrived. Once again this enclosure was from Zara at the jumping spider house and I really just can't thank Zara enough for all the help that she's given me especially in helping me get set up with a bioactive enclosure. She sent me through loads of different things that will help me get set up because I really didn't have any clue how to do it or didn't have any equipment at all so just to say Big massive thanks to Zara again and also for her completely gorgeous enclosures which match my lovely pink sling enclosures too. So love it. Thank you Zara. A bioactive setup is a setup in which you can use live plants or other invertebrates as a cleanup crew to remove any dead material or to basically just live in the uh, substrate in your enclosure to help keep it clean. A setup consists of first of all bio balls for drainage. These are just clay balls that can provide optimum drainage in your enclosure. On top of these, we will place some mesh that will allow drainage without any of the substrate having to slip through the balls. On top of that, then we will put our substrate. So Zara has very kindly sent me some of this lovely, it looks like cocoa bark substrate. It's really dark and thick. It's a little bit moist as well. Mm, smells nice too. So that, that will go on top of our mesh. And then on top of that, we will also include some sphagnum moss. Now I will be spraying this a little bit as it is a little bit dry. This will help to um, keep the humidity in the tank as well. And will also provide some cover for our new friends. <gasps> Very exciting, our little isopods. So Sarah has sent us through, I won't wanna put them up the light too much in case I disturb them. These are isopods. These look like little dairy cow isopods and they are going to live in our substrate um, and help to clean up our enclosure. Look how cute they are. They're just the cutest. I will put up other videos of these whenever I get this all set up, but these are just so sweet. So they're going to be my first invertebrate of this channel. So I'm very excited. Right, here we go. Let's give it a go. I will start by putting in my bio balls. I'm not going to put too many in, just a little layer up until maybe about here on my tank because I don't want to affect the ventilation in my tank. So excuse the noise. Now, that looks nice. I think that should provide a ample layer of drainage. So I'll just put a little bit more in. In you go. There we go. So as you can see, I've put my little bio balls in there. That will be a good bit of drainage. I'm actually just going to give these a little spray as well. So I have some bottled water here. Not vodka, sadly. Uh, I will spray that in there just so they have a little bit of moisture with them and on top of this I am going to place my mesh so I'm going to put this down into it as I said before this will provide a little bit of protection from the substrate slipping down into the into the bio balls I have doubled this up so let's see if it'll fit just gonna sort of tuck it down in there Let me see. Okay, that wasn't really fitting, so I got my trusty scissors out and I have cut my mesh down a little bit. There we go. And that should fit a lot better now. In it goes. Yeah. Gorgeous. Just gorge. I just tuck that all the way down. It does seem to be curling a little bit at the end. Let me put it the other way around. Like so. Yes, there we go. Okay. Feel to prepare. Prepare to feel. So we shall cut it down a little bit smaller to fit into our enclosure. There we go. Perfect. The perfect fit. 
So as I said before, this will just provide drainage. We don't want it to get too humid in there, but we also want to um, make sure that our little ice pods aren't able to get down into our balls as well. Now, and now I will add the substrate. So as you can see, this is like a nice cocoa, cocoa substrate. It should hold good humidity, um, but should also provide a good bit of habitat for our little isopods as well. So let's get, there we go. Now, I don't want to get it anywhere near my uh, little mesh because I want to provide good ventilation for both spiders and ice pods. I could put a little bit extra in it. I'm actually going to build it up a little bit at the back here so that I can put my little plant in for it as well. So just pop that in like that. As you can see, a good layer of drainage on the bottom with my mesh and then my substrate on top and that substrate is just nicely moist. Now I'm going to add my little Tradescantia Nanook plant in. As you can see it's a little bit bunched up at the bottom with the roots so I am going to flatten the roots out a little bit. Woo! It's getting a bit messy in here. I'm keeping these in my partner's music studio so I like to get it really messy whenever he's not here and it works so he doesn't actually get to see what happens in here so I can clean it all up before he gets home. So I'm just going to put him in there. I'm just going to try and work it into the substrate as much as I can. Now I have built it up a little bit more at the back because I don't want it to get too much in the way of my mesh ventilation. That actually looks very nice. Looks just gorgeous. The soil everywhere, perhaps not so much. No, that is lovely. So, he seems to be getting settled in there. Okay, just clean away some of the dirt off the leaves. And I'm just gonna check that he fits in okay. There might be a little bit of a squeeze, but I might have to trim some of the leaves, but. Oh. He seems to fit in okay. I'm sure it'll be okay once it'll be another while before I'll be putting my spider into this. So um I just want to basically see if it if it gets set up okay. I can maybe trim it a little bit, although I don't really want to trim it because it's so pretty, but we shall see how it all goes. So that's my little plant included. I'm just gonna push it down a little bit more there. Um and I'm gonna give it another little spray just so it allows the roots a little bit of moisture. I haven't really watered this one too much. It doesn't really need too much uh, moisture, but I am just going to mist it. Give it a good little bit of mist just to make sure that it's going to seed in okay. And then I'm going to add my sphagnum moss on top. And I'm gonna add my isopods, I'm so excited. So. I'm just going to put some of the moss down here. As I said, I don't really want to cover over too much of the ventilation. I'm going to really focus adding most of the moss sort of towards the back. It's quite nice. Now, my plant is completely covered in moss, so I apologise, plant. There we go. I'm going to tuck some moss in there. And just around, whoops, around the roots of my plant. So now the exciting bit, I'm going to add in my little isopods. So let's have a little look at them. I'm also going to include a little bit of fruit in with these once I've finished making this video, just to provide them with a little bit of extra food. So they've been packaged really well in the moss. Oh, they're quick. So here we go. These are our little dairy cow isopods. They're very cute. They're quite big actually as well, some of them too. And they do just look like little cows. Now I don't think they like being in the light too much, so I'm going to pop them in there. And you go friends. Oh, he's saying hello there. Hello. 
So cute. In you go. And these can go in there too, friends. There we go. I'm not going to squish them in too much. As you can see, the lovely little dairy cow markings on our isopods. In you go. There you go. Oh, they're so cute. And I'm not really going to squish them around too much in there. I'm sure they can find their own way in there. And just again, I'm going to give them another little spritz. Just so it's nice and moist for them in there. So, there we go. Now, now, that's all looking good. Looking very nice. Oh, well, I don't want you to be caught in there. There you go. Now, there you go, chum. You can go too. My, looking great. And I can put my little lid back on top. I'm sorry, plant, that I'm crushing you a little bit, but there we go. So, that is my first attempt at a bioactive setup. Fingers crossed, it all goes okay. It wasn't that difficult, but I am only a beginner, so any hints and tips, please let me know if you have any other tips that you can give a beginner for setting up a bioactive setup. But I think that's not too bad for a first attempt. But my isopods seem to be exploring. I'm not going to keep this bright light on them because I know they don't like direct sunlight. So it's just to show them up inside their enclosure. But they seem to be exploring okay. Oh, they're so cute. So guys, that's my video for today on how to set up a bioactive enclosure for jumping spiders as a complete beginner. Thanks for watching. If you have any other hints or tips as to how to keep jumping spiders, please do let me know in the comments below or if I've made any mistakes, also let me know as well because I am just a beginner, as you can tell. I'm not used to YouTube um, and I, I'm just hoping to learn as much as I can. So I haven't got my jumping spider yet, but I will hopefully in the next week or two, as well as my praying mantis, my giant Asian mantis. And I will be doing videos on my mantis den setup as well. So guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely week and I will see you very soon. And 